May the peace, blessings of Allah be upon you. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings upon his noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me welcome you to this very special program and one of our final programs in Islam Awareness Week. Tonight we are featuring Dr. Sabil Ahmad. He is no stranger to any one of us. Uh, Dr. Uh, Welcome to the program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, you've been in Guyana eight days now. How has been your stay? I think pretty soon I wanted to stay here. It's wonderful. <laughs> Weather is good. Back home in Chicago, freezing. <laughs> you, you know, I, I actually don't want to introduce you because Dr. Sabil, he's a regular visitor to Guyana. He, he's told us that he's very much at home when he's here in Guyana. You, all, you already, already know that Dr. Sabil, he is from the Peace, uh, Gain Peace. He is the director of Gain Peace, a Dawah organization that they promote and give the message of Islam to people. And it's a coincidence because he's from Gain Peace and our, our uh, theme for this year is Islam for Peace and preservation of life. So it's peace all the way. Um, what you didn't know about Dr. Sabil though, is that he's an excellent table tennis player. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Sheikh, we, tonight's program, first of all, we would like to once again, because people continue to have different impressions about Islam, about the basic beliefs of Islam. For example, some people, they see us worship and we face Mecca and we face the Kaaba. Some people say that we worship the Kaaba. So lots of misunderstandings about Islam. So the first thing I would like you to do for us, our viewers tonight, is to clarify the basic beliefs in Islam. Wonderful. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I start in the name of God, Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. And welcome and greet all of you with the Islamic greeting of Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Almighty Allah, the Creator, be upon each single one of you, and God's guidance and God's blessing. Now I'm going to briefly present or mention or remind all of you about the basic teachings of Islam, inshallah. The very first point that Muslims or Islam believes is that there is one God. We believe that God is only one. He's not one in three. He's not idols, but he's the one unseen creator. We say that God is all-knowing. That means anything that we could speak now, anything that we are thinking, anything that happens anywhere in the world, God knows about it. So one belief in Islam is that we don't approach God or pray to God through a mediator. Don't need to because God could hear us. God is all-knowing. The third important attribute of God is that God is eternal. Eternal means he always existed. Now, anyone who always exists does not need parents. And we also say that God does not have any children, any progeny, any sons or daughters. God is the only creator, not Muhammad, peace be upon him, not some other part of the creation. God alone is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Now, two other important attributes of God, even though he has many, many attributes. Two other attributes of God is that in Islam, 
the Quran says that God is al wadud He is all loving, the source of all love. Now, when we human beings, when we love our children, our spouses, our family, or anyone out there, love means we want to help the person who we love. Isn't that the outcome of love? Since God loves humanity, God loves uh, the creation, God loves to help the creation. So one of the names of God is that he is al-hadi, means he is the guide, means he guides humanity, he guides the creation. Islam says, very important, for God to guide the creation, God does not come down and become the creation. He does not come down, become a human, idol, or part of the creation. God remains God. And he sends his revelation to special human beings who are called as prophets and messengers. Now the viewers may know this uh, from your background, that some of the prophets and the messengers which are mentioned in the Quran, Prophet Noah, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Moses, Solomon, David, Jesus, and Muhammad. Peace be upon all the prophets and messengers. So when God started to send his guidance to humanity, the foremost, the, the ideology that God has sent, starting from Adam to Muhammad, peace be upon him, consistent ideology, submit yourself to one God. Mm -hmm. do, not, do not submit yourself in worship to humans or idols or any creation, but to one God. Yeah. So, you know, when the Christians or people would say the word was God, we Muslims, we add an L-Y there and we say the word was godly. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the word was God with a, an apostrophe S. Mm -hmm. So God, the, nothing else can take the form of God, neither can he take the form of a man to come down on earth. Right, right. Uh, so, alhamdulillah. This program belongs to you. Our viewers, this program belongs to you. As you would look on the screen, you would see the numbers, especially the ideas that we are sharing about God, you might have some questions as it relates to our Islamic idea of God, the, the basic beliefs in Islam, what we believe about God, you might have a different belief. So we invite you to interact with our learned Sheikh here. Um, Sheikh, Islam has been a way of life that has attracted the attention of many people. Because as you were speaking just now, you did describe Allah as Al-Wadud, the loving one. And we are here, we have Islam Awareness Week, Islam for Peace and Preservation of Life. You work for gain peace, peace, mm -hmm. everything is P-E-A-C-E, -E, yes. right? Um, but yet still, a lot of people, they believe that Islam is a violent way of life. Can you please clarify this? Because some people, when they see certain ways that the media is projecting mm -hmm. certain actions of certain Muslims, it may give the perception mm -hmm. that either all the Muslims or Islam propagates violence. Yeah. The simple answer is, it's no. Islam does not propagate violence. Islam is against violence. Islam came as a solution to violence. Islam is for justice, equality, mm -hmm. and the outcome of those is peace. Mm -hmm. And I could, I could elaborate on that if you, if you have it, uh, time. Yes, you very, very important. I give this analogy. Like suppose if someone comes here from Mars and asks me the question that, you know, uh, Dr. Sabil, how are the people of Guyana? Suppose if I tell that person that people of Guyana, they drink a lot and they commit crime, for example. Second person comes from Mars, I give them the same answer, and the third person, and they repeat that same answer over and over again. Suppose if those people from Mars goes back to their planet, what do you think they will tell to their people? Yeah. That the Guyanese people, they drink and they kill. Yeah. So it will not be fair for me to give an incomplete picture of the wonderful people wonderful country, wonderful house, wonderful food. Mm -hmm. I would not be doing justice if I don't present the holistic picture of the people or the faith. In the same way, in the same way, it's very important for us to separate 
the actions of a few minority of the Muslims who may be committing violence, oppressing the people, taking away their rights. It is because of their shortcomings and human fallible nature. Islam over here, the wonderful faith, the teachings of the Islam, Quran, it speaks about the sanctity of life, the respect of life, and the preservation of life. For example, in the Quran, now I'm holding the translation of the Quran, by the way. In the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 32, eloquently speaks about the preservation of life. It says, taking one life is like taking the life of all of humanity. And saving one life is like saving the life of all of humanity. It doesn't say the Muslim life, by the way. Mm -hmm. All life are important in the eyes of God. And we as Muslims, as humans, we are supposed to protect it, save it, and peacefully live with it. Okay? A second way that I could approach this uh, question would be, Muslims, just like some followers of Christianity, we are human beings. We make errors, we make mistakes. It will not be fair to judge Islam because of my shortcomings or your shortcomings. It will not be. In the same way, it will not be fair to judge Christianity by the shortcomings of the Christian viewers or Hinduism by the shortcomings of the Hindu viewers, right? Just like Jim Jones does not speak for Christianity, in the same way, some Muslims who are not abiding by the rules of the Quran, they do not speak for Islam. What speaks for Islam is the word of God, which is the Quran. What speaks for Islam is the noble life of the noble prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So really caution to the viewer would be, if you want to know what Islam is, media, Fox News is not the best source. Watch this wonderful TV, the television program, Islamic Awareness Week. Consult uh, and approach your colleagues, the wonderful scholars, Muslim scholars which are here in this country. Approach them. If you have questions, read the Quran. We could send one free for you. Or you could uh, get it from one of your friends. That is the source of Islam. Beautiful faith, wonderful guidance, not some people who are going against the teachings of Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh, I am very happy that you have clarified this because as they are looking at the television or they are seeing me and you and you are promoting peace from an Islamic point of view. But when they look on the television, they see people looking like me and dressed like me and they are doing all sorts of crimes, mm -hmm. right? So, alhamdulillah, I'm happy that our viewers can know that the actions of a few people does not, does not um, define, do, define the Islamic uh, principles on peace. Um, however, many people, they have the idea, they promote the idea that Islam teaches to hate unbelievers. So, I would like you to clarify this. All right, so one misconception could be Islam promotes to hate disbelievers? Yes. Nothing could be further from the truth, by the way. <laughs> very, very important, uh, yeah. especially to the Jewish and the Christian people. Mm -hmm. Several times in the Quran, a very respected title is given, people of the book. That title is given to our Jewish and the Christian friends, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he moved from Mecca to Medina for migration, and he started to live in Medina. When he moved to Medina, Jewish people were there. In Mecca, there were Christian people, by the way, and he used to live peacefully with them. In Medina, the Jewish people were there, and he formed an alliance, a charter with them, that Jewish people and the Muslim people, we are one, we are going to look out for each other. We are not going to support the enemy. We'll be one in protecting each other. That's not hate. That's unity. Number two. Yeah. Number three, very, very important. Islam allows, especially the Muslim males, to marry people of the book, the Christian and the Jewish females. How can there be love, affection, compassion in marriage when we are supposed to hate them? Yeah. That, that speaks opposite of uh, that misconception, right? Closeness. Uh, number four, very, very important. Chapter two of the Quran, verse number 256. 
It says that la ikraha fiddin. There is no compulsion in faith. No one could force and no one should force anyone to embrace Islam. It should come from your heart by examining the Quran, the wonderful teachings, obeying to the Creator. Number five, very important. When Muslims move to different parts of the land, let's just talk about Guyana, by the way. Yeah. Guyanese over here, I just heard that there are many doctors over here enhancing the society. Many businesses, many lawyers, many pharmacists, many just common people living peacefully over here. If Islam told us to hate, we'll be like hating and killing and all of that. Muslims are, they have very good standing over here. Yeah. Number six, very important. When Muslims went to different parts of the world, Muslims Spain, for example, Muslims build hospitals, uh, colleges, institutions, where people from different parts of the world, they used to come, they used to study under the Muslim Spain, and Muslims opened their arms and they helped them out. Number six, when the Jewish people at the Inquisition in Spain, they were getting tortured, burned at stake, and forcefully converted to Christianity, they had no place to go. Yeah. Muslims, they opened their arms. Come, we'll accommodate you in the Ottoman Empire, in Africa, and in the Palestine. So we have thousands of examples all, all throughout history. Quran says to live, to live with peace and harmony, equality and justice with all people. History testifies Muslims have done that. Guyanese Muslims testify to that. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the example of it. Yeah, I'm so happy the way we are emphasizing peace, Islam, it's truly a peaceful way of life. And you know, Sheikh, in the media we've seen so much negative pictures painted about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And to support you, um, your point, we've seen a people who tried to drop a stone on the head of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to kill him. And they were allowed to leave free without being killed, without being tortured, and so on. Uh, Sheikh, in, in, in the world today, We've seen people, they're projecting Muslim women as being uh, looked down upon, degraded, mm -hmm. not liberated, but degraded, right? Tell us about this, the, the Islamic point of view of women. Okay, I think that's a very good question, Brother Nizam, that you're asking. Yeah. Some people, they may have this perception that just because the Muslim ladies are wearing the hijab, as it, as it is called, by the way, that somehow they are oppressed, taken as second-class citizens, yeah. or less than a man. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be further from the truth, by the way. Before Islam came to Arabia, ladies before Islam came to Arabia, they were treated as property. They were uh, married and they were discarded. And some people, even some Christian theologians, mm -hmm. they used to have a debate that, did do women, do women have a soul? I mean, they used to have these debates. Yeah. In that darkness in which Arabia, where Islam uh, was revived again uh, through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, baby girls used to be buried alive. So Islam came, Islam uplifted the status of women equal to men in the eyes of God. No, different responsibilities, by the way, because of our biological and physical nature, psychological nature. Mm -hmm. Equal reward if they fulfill their responsibilities. Equal reward if we fulfill their responsibilities. An eloquent verse in the Quran, chapter 33, verse number 35, alludes to it, the equality between men and women in Islam. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in an authentic narration, he mentioned that men and women, they are like twins, mm -hmm. number two. Number three, very, very important, some of the rights which Islam gives to women have been won after a lot of struggle by the Guyanese women and by the Western women. For example, the right to keep their maiden name, Islam allows it. The lady, after she gets married, doesn't have to adopt the husband's last name. Why does she have to? Why is not the other way around? So that's one right. Muslim ladies are given, not in the 21st century, 7th century, by the way. They have the right to own property in the U.S., not until the 1850s that the U.S. women won the right to own property. 
Muslim ladies, they have the right to uh, gain education, not just the right and obligation. So if somebody is like denying them the right, yeah. it is those people's misunderstanding. But here are the beautiful teachings of Islam. But let me end with one more important thing, inshallah. Yeah. Mis Muslim women were so much empowered in history, even now too, by the way, yeah. that the oldest continuous university on the face of this earth was built by a young Muslim lady in the year 859 the University of Karayoni in Morocco. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, a Muslim lady built that university before Harvard, before Oxford, before the University of Guyana. Yeah. That's the power, equality, and status that Islam gave to women. If you see otherwise, that's culture, here is Islam. Because some people, they're actually saying that in Islam, women don't have the right to education and these, you know, these things they're peddling in the media. Um, Sheikh, coming back to the point of owning property, I've read that in some other systems that when a man marries a woman, he automatically becomes the controller of her wealth and he, he takes over her wealth. This is not so in Islam. Muslim ladies are the queens of the house, by the way. <laughs> Whatever they earn, it yeah. belongs to them. Yeah. Whatever the husband earns, it also belongs to them too, some of it. Yeah. Look at it, they have the best of both worlds. So yeah. they are the queens of the house. Yeah. So property of a Muslim lady, husband, she could share the property if she wants, but the husband has the obligation to support financially and other different ways yeah. financially. In other systems, it's the opposite by the way. But Islam is a beautiful faith. It uplifted the women, yeah. gave them equality in the eyes of God. Yeah. And in Islam, she does not have to share her wealth with him as an yeah. obligation. As I mentioned. She has the right to manage her own wealth and everything, own it and control it. Right? Um, let us move away a little from men because we only have an hour <laughs> and we have so many things to discuss. Um, Racism is a scourge in the world today. And I'm glad we're going to speak about racism because we're at a stage in Guyana now that just a few months down the line, we'll be having elections. Mm -hmm. And in Guyana, at election time, people, you know, they turn against each other along the racist lines, mm -hmm. the racial lines, right? So what is the point of view of Islam as it relates to racism? Again, before Islam came into the picture in Arabia, yeah. now very important, let me remind again, Islam was there from the time of Adam, by the way. All the prophets came with the same message, but as humanity deviated from the message, prophet after prophet were sent from God, sent means appointed by God to remind humanity. Mm -hmm. Who is the creator? What's the purpose of life? He alone we should worship. When people lost track of that, the final messenger was sent in Arabia. Muhammad, peace be upon him. So before he was sent in Arabia, racism was rampant. People used to say, I'm superior because I'm certain skin, skin color. I'm superior because of certain tribe, certain background. When Islam came, many places in the Quran, one of the places it says, how it unifies humanity, look at the beautiful words from the Quran. Chapter 49 of the Quran, verse number 13. The translation is this, that O oh mankind, God is speaking, that O oh mankind, we have created you from one male and one female and made you into nations and tribes that you get to know each other, that you get to know each other, not that you may despise each other. The best amongst you is the one who is the most pious, submitter to God. So Islam is saying that it doesn't matter your color of your skin, nationality, economic background, male or female gender, doesn't matter in the eyes of God, we are one. The best amongst us is the one who is submitting to God. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he again reinforced their solution against racism. In an authentic narration in Imam Tirmidhi's collection, he mentioned a white, an Arab, is no superior to a non-Arab or vice versa. 
a, a white person is no superior to a, a black and a black is no superior to a white. All of us, yes, all of us, we are children of Adam. And Adam was made from dust. Mm -hmm. Look at this, bringing humanity together. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, not only just spoke these things, he showed by action. Islam is not just in theory, in practice. It, it just doesn't say to do it, it shows how to do it. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his coalition of companions, he used to have the blackest of the black person, the whitest of the white person, and all the shares in the middle. Different tribes, different nationalities, uh, you know, economic background. Various people of various background in his companionship. Mm -hmm. They used to pray shoulder to shoulder. All brothers, brotherhood, equality. That is Islam's solution to racism. Unfortunately, where I am coming from, even now today, actually yesterday, there was riots because white police officer shot a unarmed black individual. In Ferguson, about two or three months ago, there were riots, people were burning the buildings and rallies were taken out because, you know, racism. Islam has a perfect solution. Sheikh, human beings, they really hurt each other, along, you know, along the, the racist lines when they're against each other based upon the color of the skin. And Alhamdulillah, once again, and we are speaking peace again, peace between races this time. Yeah, you know what, well, coming to racism again, before we get to the next question or next yeah. caller, some of you, the dear viewers, may have heard of Malcolm X. Have you? Yes. You have, right? I mean, he was a very famous personality uh, from USA. Now, Malcolm X, as he was growing up in the, in the 40s and the 50s, especially 60s, mm -hmm. there used to be like different fountains, drinking fountains for whites, blacks. Blacks cannot come to these fountains. Different restrooms, different restaurants, different schools, segregation was there amongst the lines of racism. Malcolm X was from that kind of a society. He became very racist. He used to think white people as negative. After he embraced Islam, started submitting to one God, he went to Mecca for pilgrimage. When he went there, he stood shoulder to shoulder with the whitest of the white and the blackest of the black. He ate with them. He, he did rituals with them. He had, he had such a profound, positive impact against racism that he wrote a letter to his friend in the uh, in, in U.S. From Mecca, he wrote a letter saying that if America also embraces Islam, all the racial problems are going to go away. Impact on a person, impact on the society. Solution, practical, best against racism and all the problems. Yeah, Sheikh, and the person who gave the, the call to prayer for the first time in Islam, wasn't he of Africa? Yeah, yeah. See, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, honored the African or people of any color. Yes. His name was Bilal, right? He gave him the honor and he made him the very first person to give the call for prayer. Muslims, we pray five times a day. Before we pray, we call out to the community that the prayer is about to begin. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, just to set an example that all people are equal, despite the different backgrounds. He gave that prestigious honor to a person who was very, very black. Bilal, radiallahu ta'ala. Yeah, and Sheikh, you are speaking about Malcolm X, and um, he must have heard about the Quran before he accepted Islam. Uh, in the history, we have seen the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa He's, he read verses of Quran even to the you know, Muslim Arabs at that time and they were flabbergasted by it. And we've seen so many people, they come into Islam because of just listening a little to the Quran. Tell me, Sheikh, and tell our viewers, what is so special about this Quran? I think that's a, that's a wonderful question. Yeah. Actually, authenticity of Islam mostly depends on the credibility of the Quran. Now, I'm a student of comparative religion, by the way. As I was growing up, about 17 years of age or so, I used to think, you know, we have the Quran, the Christians have the Bible, the Jewish people have the Old Testament. What makes Quran is special? Yeah. 
after doing the research, I'm going to present like five points really quickly, inshallah, God willing, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Point number one, Quran itself mentions that this is the word of God. Many times, one of those places in Surah Sajda, Surah 32, ayah number two, other places too. Now, just because the Quran says it is the word of God doesn't make it so. Yeah. I mean, anyone could write a book and say this book is from God. Mm -hmm. But at least it says in the Quran that this is from God. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, when Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he brought the Quran or recited the Quran to the people around him, some they embraced Islam. Mm -hmm. Some they did not because of their arrogance and whatever reason. Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not know how to read and write. Many people in his country, they were eloquent in the Arabic language. In English, we say we had one Shakespeare. In their time, they had Shakespeare's running around, every corner, every street, every block. Yeah. To those people, God is now challenging, saying that if you do not believe that this scripture is from God, why don't you produce a scripture like it? That challenge comes in chapter 17, verse number 88 of the Quran. They were not able to, by the way. Yeah. Look at this, a person does not know how to read and write, bringing a scripture, telling them, if you don't believe, produce something like it, make something like it, they cannot. The challenge was reduced in chapter number 11, verse number 13. God is saying, produce 10 chapters or surahs like the Quranic surahs. They were not able to. God just to show them that this book is special. He gave them a final challenge. Chapter number two, verse number 23. Produce one chapter like the Quranic chapter. So those challenges, they were not met by the people who were disbelievers, even though they were bent to destroy Islam. All they had to do was come together, their scholars, yeah. produce even like the smallest chapter of the Quran three passages, ten words, they were not able to. Since they were not able to, they came to, you know, fight Islam. Twenty-seven battles happened. Lots of property and life and suffering. All they had to do, come together and produce something like it. Yeah. So that shows it's a miracle. Number three, very important, it says in the Quran, chapter four, verse number 82. Had this Quran been from anyone besides Allah, you would have found contradictions, inconsistencies in it. Quran, how many pages in here? Wow. 473 pages, by the way. And more than 6,000 passages in here. Not a single contradiction in there. How is it possible? Person doesn't know how to read and write. Writing so many passages, covering so many topics, historical facts, scientific facts, and prophecies. Not a single mistake in here impossible. Again, it shows it's from God. Number five, Quran has prophecies, many, many prophecies. One of the prophecies of the Quran is chapter 15, verse number nine, that this is a revelation from God and God is the one who's going to protect it. Means it getting corrupted or get it getting lost. Lo and behold, from the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, up until our time, the Quran in Arabic language is exactly the same as the one that was revealed to Muhammad, peace be upon him. Number six, 6,000 passages plus in here. No less than 500 passages, it speaks about scientific facts. Example, how the universe began from one primordial mass, then God set it asunder. Chapter 21, verse number 30. It says in chapter 21, verse number 33, that the sun, the moon, and all the celestial bodies, they are rotating and they are revolving. No scientific instruments at that time, by the way, seventh century, microscope, telescope, MRI instruments, not Google satellites, not there. How is it possible? Somebody is saying all of these scientific facts. Quran speaks about how the mountains are like pegs. You see the top of the mountain? Underneath the ground is an inverted, as deep a mountain. Chapter 78, verse number six and seven. Quran speaks about how the baby, the fetus, 
develops in the mother's womb. Many places, one of those places, chapter 23, verse number 12, 13, and 14. The universe is expanding. Mm -hmm. Not until the 1920s, Hubble, and the 1960s, two physicists, they won the Nobel Prize in Physics when they confirmed the universe is expanding. Quran says in chapter 51, verse number 47. Do we have time for 500 of them? I guess not. 500 facts, zero errors. Mathematically, not possible. Person or people of 7th century, impossible. That shows cannot be from a human being or the creation. It is the word of God. Uh, Sheikh, people are having today social problems in family, husband and wife, women. Um, people are having problems with alcohol and, and so many different challenges will, will, will rise before people. Does the Quran uh, give the answer to all of these problems? No, I always give the analogy as I have given. Yeah. Loving parents yeah. would like to guide children in all different ways possible. Yeah. Feeding them, clothing them, bathing them, giving them good education. Every single step the child needs help, parents are there. When we were growing up, our parents were there. God loves humanity and the creation. He's not going to deprive the creation from the solutions to humanity's problems. Many problems are there, unfortunately. The homicide, the suicide, the intoxicants, gambling, breakdown of the family structure, on and on and on. Every single problem, Quran has solutions. One solution, as you have mentioned, intoxicants. Yeah. Do people drink a lot over here uh, in the U.S.? Rampant drinking, unfortunately. Same thing over here, I guess, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Exactly. Exactly. Drinking, drinking causes so many problems. Breakdown of the families. U.S. has 50% plus divorce rate. Drinking or intoxicants play a big role in splitting the families. Drinking invites other drugs to be taken by the individuals. Drinking wastes money. When people, when they drink, they have to buy from somewhere, right? It wastes money. Yeah. Drinking, 45,000 casualties in the U.S. because of drinking. Uh, drinking causes so much ailment, health problems, cancers within the family. Drinking is a poison that they sell in the bottle. Mm -hmm. Since it's a problem, God is loving God, there has to be some solution. Yeah. Our Creator has sent the solution in here. Listen to this, my dear viewers. Chapter 2 of the Quran, verse number 219, a translation is that in gambling and in intoxicants, there is a small benefit, but the harms outweigh the small benefit. So God is saying that, you know, just don't drink because you're getting some, you know, small benefit. Look at the, all the harms to you mm -hmm. and to the society it's causing. Then in chapter 5 of the Quran, verse number 90, it says the translation that in intoxicants, in gambling, and in the deviation of the arrows. These are Satan's handiwork. Stay away from it so you may prosper. So Islam is the perfect solution. Islam does not say, age of 16, now you're free to drink. Age, I'm not sure what age over here, 21, free to drink. Yeah. Zero percent tolerance. If Guyana adopts that policy, zero percent drinking, if the world adopts it, look at all the families we could preserve, yeah. all the finances we could save and use it for good purpose, and all the, and all the casualties that are happening, the lives we could save. Yeah best solution, simple solution, godly solution, the humongous problem. Again, it shows the beauty of Islam. And Sheikh, what I've learned is that the Quran is the only book, the Quran that you're showing to our viewers, is the only book that says, shun it. Yeah. Quran is very explicit, give it up, shun it. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, even was more explicit. Do not drink it, do not produce it, do not make anyone drink it. Every single channel that leads a person to drink, Islam cuts it off. Because Allah, the Creator, knows the humongous chaos drinking could cause. 
not just drinking by the way intoxicants intoxicant god knows it and he sent us the perfect solution the gift of god is there if we adopt the solution good for us if we don't there are consequences and and you're correct how many problems alcohol leads to and we have a problem in guyana of suicide alcohol is the main cause of suicide in guyana uh sheikh islam has taught us about previous prophets 25 mentioned in al quran but we want to focus tonight upon jesus he was 600 years before muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he is the one spoken about and we as muslims we project a certain picture about jesus christ how does islam view jesus and his mother mary okay alhamdulillah so ashik before you answer that question we have a call yes please go ahead call you're on to the program good night assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam he will have it um can i have the shape number one to speak with him silently say again i want to speak with a shape silently can i have his number please um either tomorrow or today or tonight or whatever yeah she could be going um not long from now he wouldn't be in the country anymore no no tomorrow tomorrow only possible sorry right Um a 646 to to 494 yeah Nizam All right All right you can try my number after the program please <laughs> All right Yes she So <laughs> what were you, what were we discussing Oh, we, about, yeah, about Jesus we, peace be upon Jesus him. Jesus and his mother. Okay. It's wonderful. Okay. So Jesus peace be upon him even before we speak about the mighty prophet of Islam let's speak about his mother. Mother Mary peace be upon her. Wonderful women described or mentioned in the Quran chapter number 3 verse number 47 as the most pious lady that God has created. Look at the honor that God has given to a lady. the most pious lady to the mother of Jesus peace be upon her number 1 number 2 of all the passages in the Quran there is only one lady by name mentioned in the Quran in the whole Quran by the way and that name is Mary mm-hmm. honor number 3 very very important there are 114 chapters or surahs of the Quran N- number 19 chapter is named after the chapter of mary maryam as it says right oh, yeah, yeah. that's the honor muslim ladies when they cover themselves i mean they are covering because they are obeying the creator but they are also emulating mary peace be upon her she used to cover herself mm-hmm. modesty right so she was given the miracle that when she was uh, a virgin god gave uh, okay you have yeah, called you have another call okay fine sorry sure. to call you on to the program yeah wa alaikum assalam i like to you know when the international okay yeah Yes. Yeah, this deception. It's a good point you're making, brother, right? Yeah. Thanks for your contribution. Yeah. So l- let's continue because we are we were speaking about the status of Jesus and Mary in Islam. Yeah. So Mary peace be upon her she was given the status 
with the miracle that when she was a virgin, by the miracle of God, she conceived Jesus. Peace be upon him. A miracle that Jesus performed, because at that time, obviously, I mean, in, in, in the time now too, if anyone who's not married, uh, if she brings a child to the world, people are going to accuse the person. Yeah. So as she brought baby Jesus to the people, obviously she was thinking, you know, they would accuse her, and she, they did. Then Jesus, peace be upon him, by the miracle of God, the very first miracle mentioned about Jesus in the Quran, he started to speak saying that, you know, I am sent with the children of Israel, I am made a prophet, and my message is the oneness of God. Very, very important. So Muslims, what we believe about Jesus is that he is a prophet in a chain of prophets that God has appointed to convey the message of one God. He was sent to the children of Israel, right, to that region, and he was supposed to, and he did, to call people to worship the Creator, not the creation. Sheikh, on that point, Creator, not the creation. Let's take this call. Inshallah. Caller, you're on to the program. Yeah, good evening, brother. Same to you. Good evening. Uh, something is funny. Yeah. 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 Ye
they don't fulfill the six important beliefs. Right. You are on the point as worshiping the creator, not the creation, on the point of Jesus. So Jesus, peace be upon him, is seen as a prophet and a messenger of God. Chapter 5 of the Quran, verse number 75, it says that Jesus was a messenger of God. Many messengers have passed away before him. His mother was a mother of truth. They both used to eat. Him and his mother, they both used to eat. So God is saying that anyone who eats is dependent on food. Anyone who is dependent on anything cannot be God. It says in chapter 61, verse number 6 of the Quran, that Jesus was sent to the children of Israel with monotheism to give them, to, to confirm what came before him, the Torah, and to give them the glad tidings of a messenger to come after him, yes. Ahmad, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Jesus, peace be upon him, is denied in the Quran that uh, he is God or son of God. Chapter 5, verse number 72 and 73, negates that he was God or son of God. Last but not the least, well, I shouldn't say last, second last but not the least, <laughs> Jesus Christ, it says in the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 147, that they boast that they killed Jesus, the uh, Messiah. They killed him not, neither they crucified him. It only made to appear to them, God lifted Jesus up to himself. And the last one is, the last point, mm -hmm. on the day of judgment, Jesus peace be upon him, as a messenger of God, will stand in front of God. God is going to ask Jesus, that Jesus, did you say to your people to worship me, means worship Jesus and your mother? Jesus will say, I never said that. If I did, God, you would know it. Allah, you would know it. I never said that. Yeah. All I told them was, worship my God and worship your God, which is Allah. And that is the right path. And up to 375 years after Christ had died, Jesus Christ, peace be unto him, people, there were still Christian priests who were saying that he was just a messenger from God and he was not God. Yes, yes. I mean, even the New Testament says that he's a prophet of God. Yeah. Right? Many, many places it says that he's a prophet of God. Matthew chapter 13, verse number 57. Yeah. Uh, Mark chapter 6, verse number 4. <laughs> Luke number 13, verse number 33. John chapter 4, verse number 44. Even the New Testament says that he is a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus Christ, just like any prophet, he was giving, given miracles. But very important, the Quran says the miracle of Jesus, what, what was given, raising people from the dead, giving eyesight to the blind, healing the lepers, every single miracle according to the Quran, chapter 19, verse number, uh, uh, verse number 30, and chapter number uh, 3. God says that it is by the power of God that Jesus was performing the miracles. Since some people in history, they mistook him and they elevated his position more than a human being to son of God and then to God and to part of the Trinity. Yeah. One of the reasons Quran came, besides many reasons, is to clarify to the Christians and to all of humanity that Jesus was a messenger of God. He was a human being, a prophet. And worshipping the Creator was the message of Jesus. Yeah. Um, right. So we believe that Jesus was a prophet of God. Let us take this call, Shri. Caller, you're on to the program. Good night, Dora. Good night. Good night. Yeah, um, my name is Dora Dio. Yeah. Yeah. Right, 600 years. Yeah, very, very long time. Yeah. Islam had a lot of time to copy the book of the Torah and the Bible and mm -hmm. came to the perspective. Very good, very so good question. Yeah. Okay. All right, let us shake answer, right? Because we only have a very short time. So listen to the answer carefully, yeah, right? Fast. Did the Quran copy from the Bible? Okay, very important. One misconception. No, first and foremost, thanks for asking that question. Yes. Islam did not came after, Christi uh, after Christianity, by the way. Islam, the ideology was there all throughout the centuries. All the prophets, they came with the monotheistic ideology, number one. 
Quran came after the Bible, by the way, after the Bible was written. Now, Quran was not copied from the Bible. Quran was independently given as a revelation by God to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Just because there are similarities between the Quran and the New Testament or the Bible doesn't mean that the Quran was copied. It's possible same source gave both the scriptures. See, Injil, which was given to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, had the monotheistic message. Quran has the monotheistic message. Doesn't mean it's copied. There are similarities between the New Testament and the Old Testament. Does it mean that the New Testament writers copied from the Old Testament? You will deny that. There are similarities between the Bible and the Hindu scriptures. Does it mean that the Hindu scripture, Bible copied from the Hindu scriptures? There are similarities between the Hindu scriptures and the Babylonian scriptures. Does it mean they copied? No. Quran was independently revealed, number one. Number two, Quran has statements which the Bible does not have. The scientific facts which I mentioned, Bible doesn't have it. Where did the Bible got this from? Quran has historical facts and prophecies. Bottom line, Quran is the word of God, independently revealed, the message, submission to one God, the same message. Anyone who has the right belief in doing good deeds, that's the way for salvation. And we invite all of humanity to embrace Islam so we could be saved and have the best time in the hereafter. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that each and every one of you can take the time to read and investigate and ask questions. I, I really am pleased our phone lines are going, both lines are busy right now. People want to come through, but our time is up now. You can contact us at the Guyana Islamic Trust, our Sheikh, he wouldn't be here all the time, so that we can have one-on-one -on -one dialogue and you can you can have one-on-one -on -one dialogue with the learned brothers from among us, amongst us, and we will try to answer your questions uh, as the best way possible. So we invite you to investigate and read about Islam. Keep asking questions. Very good. We, this is a very good quality that you have there, that you, you ask questions. And if you seek guidance, then I, I can assure you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not reject you as long as you open your heart to guidance. This is all we have for you on tonight's special program. Until next time, we say thank you very much to our Sheikh for being in Guyana. It was a wonderful experience, wonderful, wonderful experience. We've all been enlightened, and I'm sure you're now enlightened a little bit more about Islam. So until our next program, we continue with our regular Thursday night program. Tune in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be with you. Our final words for tonight are praise be to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. <laughs>